Hello everyone, welcome to a grinder gaming video. Today I'm going to talk about the different energy weapon damage types in the game, why some people prefer one over another, what's considered the best, and I'm going to talk about the different weapons, the beams and the cannons that use these damage types, the fundamental differences between the game mechanics of the two and why that might make you select one over another, like it did for me. So first of all, let's talk about the six different types of energy damage. You have Phaser, Disruptor, Polaron, Tetrion, Plasma, and Antiproton. Now at Mark II, which all these beam arrays are, they all have the same base damage of 151. And that's typically what you'll find in the end game as well. They're all going to have more or less the same base damage, which differentiates them. If you ask a lot of players at low level, they'll tell you it's just the color. Pick whatever color you like. If you like the blue pew pew, use the Tetrion beams. Uh, at, at low level that's fairly true, but most players start building towards one damage type so that uh, all their consoles are increasing their phaser damage so that they can use all phaser weapons for maximum damage potential. So at a fairly low level a lot of people kind of want to know which direction to start heading with their characters, uh, which ways to develop their characters. So. First of all, let's look at these low-level weapons. They all have the same base damage, but they all have a baked-in proc. That's a programmed random occurrence. They all have a chance, a 2.5% chance to trigger that proc. And when they do that, they, they trigger different abilities on each one. So the phasers have a 2.5% chance to knock a random subsystem offline of your target. Disruptors have a 2.5% chance to reduce your target's all of its damage resistance by 10 for 15 seconds. Polaron has a 2.5% chance, chance to reduce all their power levels by 25 for 5 seconds. Tetrion has a 2.5% chance to damage all their shields by 189. The Plasma has a chance to apply a dot, 7.5 damage per second for 15 seconds, and that changes as the rank of the weapon goes up, goes up with the weapon. And then finally we have Antiproton, 2.5% chance for your next beam attack to do 470% of its normal damage. Those are the base procs, basic procs built in, baked into each one of those damage types, but as you get higher level you'll find that there is many flavors of types of these weapons for each damage type. So for instance here at the top of my inventory I have two different dual cannons. Both are Polaron. So if you had a Polaron build on your ship <coughs> it would work for both of these types of Polaron as well as uh, the regular old purple Polaron. Uh, now these Polaron types have different procs baked into them and that's what really is going to decide for you at end game which damage type you want to go with is either going to be the color which is going to matter the most to you or the procs that the damage type has is going to matter the most to you <coughs> so i'm going to talk i'm not going to talk about everyone because there's dozens of types for each dozens of kinds for each type of damage like there's got to be over 20 for phasers so I'm just going to talk about some of the best ones and I'm going to talk about which damage types players prefer uh, it's not to say they're the best that's I'm talking about which ones they prefer and I'm going to talk about the reasons why so first number one reason most people's book what they're looking for is to deal extra damage so you want to talk about the highest DPS energy type in the game. Right now it's Disruptor. It's been Disruptor for some time and that's because of the proc that's baked in. It has a chance to reduce their damage resist, their target's damage resistance, which allows you to deal extra damage to them. So it's uh, one of the best damage increases that you can get from a proc on an energy weapon. 
And at Endgame, there's also another disruptor set, the Coalition disrupt Disruptor set, that it can also add a stacking resistance debuff onto the target that uh, will reduce their disruptor uh, resistance further. So disruptors are right now in the leaderboards as the highest DPS energy weapon type. Is it miles ahead of everything else? No. You could select any one of these damage types and, and do a high DPS build and you're not going to get left in the dust by disruptor. I'm sure other people are working on builds to compete with the disruptor, but I think it the disruptor slightly edges out everything else right now because of those debuffs that it adds. So number one right now for players is typically considered disruptor because of the damage potential. Um, that being said, you don't see everybody flying around with green laser beams. Uh, I'm using phaser because I like the look and the sound and that'll play a part into it for a lot of people. The other the other big main reason why I went with Phaser was because of the flexibility. There's so many uh, consoles and ship equipment that can increase your Phaser damage. <clears throat> so because Phaser is the primary Federation uh, damage type and Disruptor is the primary Klingon KDF damage type, those two damage types have the most flexible builds that you can do with them out of all the damage types because there's so many consoles and different ship equipment that you can collect to increase the damage of your phaser and disruptor so I'm going to talk about the two best in the game <clears throat> well I'm going to talk about disruptor one for its damage potential and I'm going to talk about phaser number two for its flexibility potential and the ease of acquiring gear for it um, the newer agony phaser beam arrays are considered pretty decent so there is a way to go high dps with just about any one of these so if you like one go with it that being said if you if you pick tetrion there's there's a lot less gear that influences your tetrion damage than there is available for disruptor and phaser so be prepared to uh, to have to work for it to squeeze a lot of DPS potential out of a Tetrion ship. I don't think they even have a Tetrion build listed under the beam builds on uh, on DPS League. I think that's kind of how far down. So, you know, a lot of people consider this <clears throat> the worst damage type because of shield not being considered very useful in the game and its proc being revolving around shield drain. That being said, there's a lot of different kinds of Tetrion weapons in the game. Look at the ones that I've got on this ship right here. They have a totally different proc on them. They have a, a chance to uh, reduce the shield resist of your target and increase your shield resist. So it's buffing you and debuffing them at the same time. Again, probably considered fairly worthless by players because shields are considered not a great way of tanking in the game right now. <clears throat> health pools, hall health is typically the primary form of tanking in the game, so those Tetrion builds are not considered very valuable right now. So we talked about Disruptor for its damage. We talked about Phaser because of the amount of gear that's available for Phaser and Disruptor. <clears throat> and if I had to pick a third I'd pick something that has a higher survivability potential because we already picked the highest damage potential which is Disruptor and I've seen some some of the most resilient builds in the game I believe are using the Paizo Polaron set because of the regeneration that it has a chance to trigger it's a 5% chance on the Paizo set as opposed to a 2.5% chance on most of the other sets. So it's got a 5% chance to trigger, and it's not it's not bad at all. It, it, the shield, it has a 210 shield regen each second for 10 seconds. No, nothing big, like I said, shields. Nobody really cares about them. But it has uh, a 2.5% of max haul per second regen for 10 seconds. So that's 25% of your haul over 10 seconds on a 5% chance to crit. Or, uh, 
proc, which is pretty decent. Um, I've seen, like I said, I've seen guys build entirely around that for tanking. Um, so if I had to pick top three for me, I'd say Disruptor if you're looking for damage, Phaser if you want to build your ship in all kinds of different ways. Disruptor kind of falls in that category too because there's lots of gear available for Disruptor builds. And then uh, Paizo Polaron is one of the builds that you could go, you could build towards for tanking. It's not the only one, it's not the meta tank build most likely. It's one of the ones that I'm aware of that is quite good. Now, that being said, let's look at some of the best in slot weapons that you could get for those damage types. I'm not going to talk about the best in, all the best in slot weapons, but I'm going to talk about a couple of them. Um, it's easy to show you the phaser, the, the two best phaser weapons and the two best disruptor weapons because they come from the exact same place. And in fact, while we're there, I'm going to show you where you can get these Paizo and Thoron. A lot of these different endgame damage types are acquirable through your reputation. You'll find maybe you've got some Paizo Polaron or some Thoron Polaron while you're opening the boxes that you got from leveling up your reputation when you do the hourly and dailies. If I did a hourly here with the Undine rep, it gives me that box straight away. You see it pop up in the bottom left hand side there. And if I open that box, I'm going to get whatever gear is associated with this, random gear is associated with this reputation. But if I go into the store, I don't remember if you can do that at any level, but if you can access the store for these reputations, and you can purchase any of that equipment from these individual reputations. So the Undine reputation has phasers that have a different proc on them. The biomolecular proc has a chance to slow the target and do damage to them. I've heard of some people using this in PvP to slow down fast ships so that they can hit them. Some people may find a use for that. Uh, the Paizo Polaron comes from Lucari Rep. You can go into the Lucari store and purchase that Paizo equipment here. It is quite expensive to do it this way. I'd recommend opening the boxes, the daily and hourly boxes, until you just get the stuff you want and then re-engineering it the way you want would be a lot cheaper than wasting your dilithium on it this way. But I wanted to show you guys that you can find a lot of those different end game weapon slash damage types through the store in your reputation. Now the other place that you get those uh, let me just collect this, the other place that you get the best in slot weapons in the game I'll show you, I was talking about the phaser and the disruptor one the best phaser and disruptor in slot in game both come from the discovery reputation, they look the same. So right here you've got the disruptor wide angle dual heavy beam bank and the phaser wide angle dual heavy bank. These, This is the best phaser beam in the game and this is the most powerful disruptor beam in the game. Easy to find, not as easy to acquire. Uh, I think you have to be discovery uh, reputation tier 5 to get those. <clears throat> totally worth it fantastic amount of damage that they put out. Um, and then the second best disruptor and phaser beams come also from another reputation, that's the Terran reputation, and again they look almost identical. Right here you have your Terran Task Force disruptor beam array and your Terran Task Force phaser beam array. So one of each of those weapons is going to go into just about any beam build you do with phaser or disruptor. That's going to be the first two weapons you're, you're going to slot. After that, <coughs> you know, there's all kinds of meta weapons you can pick. Uh, I have an example in my inventory here. I have a pair of the sensor-linked phaser dual beam banks. These are 
these come from lock boxes. A lot of people put them up on the exchange, though, so you can buy them. I think I bought this for like two or three million, just to kind of show you guys. But um, the sensor link and the targeting link are considered meta, so they're not the number one, but or they're not the best in slot, but they're one of the best in slots for um, phaser or disruptor damage. And you can get these sensor and targeting linked and so on in both phaser and disruptor varieties. So the sensor linked one adds five defensive maneuvering and five weapon amplification, so it increases your defense. But uh, the important one is that it increases your critical hit severity with your weapons. So if you get a couple of those on your ship, you can increase the amount of damage your crits are going to deal, which is very, very nice. There's lots of ways to increase your crit, excuse me, your crit damage in the game nowadays, but uh, a little bit trickier to get your crit severity up there. So it is considered one of the better weapons in the game for uh, phaser or disruptor. Each one of these, of course, has their own best in slot. Uh, I can show you one more. Say you want to see the best in slot Polaron beam in the game. That also comes from reputation and it is in fact the Paizo uh, reputation um, beam array from Lucari Rep that is considered the best in slot Polaron beam in the game. So if you're seeing noticing kind of a pattern here, well uh, that is true. Some of the essentially uh, most of the best in slot weapons in the game come from your reputation system so it, you know it can be a grind but you know working those reputations up is the best way to get the best some of the best gear in the game now that being said <clears throat> I buy a lot of my stuff off the exchange whenever I can get good equipment for my ship off the exchange, I do try to spend EC on it instead of the lithium. So now that we talked about the different damage types, let's talk about the energy weapon types a little bit. Um, I had mentioned in the beginning of the video about the difference in the way these weapons work. And I've been using dual heavy cannons heavily for about the last year. That's because of the on paper damage per second per uh, potential that they have. Uh, if you look at this Mark II dual heavy cannon set here, excuse me, <clears throat> they have a uh, DPS rating of 219. And if we look at a beam array that has a damage modifier on it, its DPS rating is 152. So 152 versus 219. And if we uh, compare that to a dual beam bank, 198. So this beats it out by about 20 points of damage per second at a Mark II. Those uh, broaden out a little bit as as the weapons get higher level, uh, the damage differential becomes a little bit greater, but not exponential or anything like that. So I went, I, I chose to play with dual heavies for the last year. Most people don't bother with the dual non heavies because they do a lower damage per shot they have a lower potential for big crits uh, the heavies have a 10 percent additional crit severity on them so most people don't don't even bother with the with the dual non heavies because they have the same targeting arc as a as a dual heavy you're not you're not gaining anything you're only really losing damage potential by going to those now some people used to use uh, single cannons, especially in PvP, because they had a say if you if you compare this to a dual heavy bank, it had 181 DPS. This is 100, 198. So the the dual beam bank has a slightly higher damage per second rating than this single cannon, but the single cannon has twice the targeting arc. It has a 180 degree targeting arc. Whereas the dual beam 
has just a 90 degree targeting arc and so that's what you're going to find is that the bigger the targeting arc goes on these energy weapons the smaller the damage gets um, now that being said if if i was gonna look at a, a wider arc weapon i probably would never fuss or bother with a single cannon if I wanted a 180 degree targeting arc or something that big, you know, I might as well go 250 because on the on the beam arrays with a 250 degree targeting arc, you get that overlap on your broadside where all 80 or well, yeah, all 80 or weapons on most ships, you know, all your front and all your rear. If you had beam arrays in all front and all in the rear, you could broadside and hit those targets with all eight weapons as you're circling them. Um, with a cannon it would still be somewhat positional. Now the, the major difference between the way cannons and beams work, you know I've recently switched to to using uh, beam heavy builds and I find them much much more effective, more fun to play, much more effective in, in dishing out damage um, they're more fun to play because I don't have to constantly fuss with having my ship in just the perfect position to get my, my weapons firing to do maximum damage. I can fly around and have fun and still have the majority of my weapons firing on targets. I don't have to sit there and fuss. I can, I can zip around and still do massive amounts of damage all around my ship. Now that being said, besides the targeting arc differences between beams and cannons, there's a fundamental difference between the way a cannon bolt travels to your target from your ship and how a beam travels from a, your beam array to the target. And one of the major differences is in the velocity. The, the speed of a cannon bolt is much slower than a beam. It, a beam isn't quite instantaneous, but it's at least twice as fast, I would say, as a cannon bolt. Cannon bolts will almost follow a ship that's moving very fast and get in behind it, and you'll see the trajectory of the cannon bolt actually curve as it follows a ship. And if a ship is moving very fast, too fast, and gets outside of that arc before the bolt connects with the ship, it'll count as a miss and it, and it won't do any damage. This happens a lot less often with beams. Uh, because the velocity of a beam is so much quicker traveling from your ship to your target, and on top of that, it doesn't ever curve behind a target. You never see a beam. <laughs> curving to hit something, the beam will always travel straight from your ship to your target. Um, and that is a huge advantage. Uh, when you're moving quickly or you're trying to gain position quickly, those things aren't as crucial in TFOs unless you're, you like to fly around and have fun like I do. Then the beams are just so much easier to keep on target and and actually hit and do lots of damage to those targets and still fly around and have fun. Now that's that's from a TFO uh, point of view. Uh, my point of view that I like to have fun. I don't like to just sit in gun platform like somebody firing all torpedoes or um, in this case I'm even kind of falling out of love with my cannon setups. So in TFOs generally, I still find maybe on paper it, it looks like cannons will do more damage in a TFO and if you're patient and good at piloting and, and willing to sit there and, and <clears throat> gun platform it, yeah, cannons could kick out some higher numbers potentially. But I find in real world performance, my beam arrays are just firing so much more often at so many different trajectories, firing arcs, um, because on a beam build, I've got three Omnis in the back that are pretty much always firing at anything within 10 kilometers. And then I've got some beam arrays, a number of beam arrays there too. So, you know, my, I find my beam builds 
in the real world are dishing out a lot more damage in TFOs than than my cannon builds, and and that that can change if I like I said I sat in gun platform. And I'm sure I could get more out of my cannons, but I don't particularly find that kind of gameplay enjoyable at this point. Now that's from TFO perspective. In PvP, I'd say by far and wide the most popular weapon choice now is beams uh, since the beam overload overhaul it's a lot easier to do really well with beams and everything that I talked about before uh, about targeting um, targeting arc and the lag you can get a little bit of lag with cannons before they begin to fire when you get something in your targeting arc it's not an instantaneous uh, spitting out uh, damage like a beam is it seems like the instant something is in a beams firing arc it, it, it's hitting them whereas you know if you're passing across a, a, a a target for a couple of seconds it passes through your targeting arc for a couple of seconds when you're firing cannons it might not even shoot shoot at it at all so in pvp where escorts and fast moving ships are very common the most popular ones to see in pvp i find cannons and to some degree torpedoes virtually useless uh, unless you get into a slug out with somebody a lot of times you end up in a dog fight with somebody and trying to get cannons to fire on somebody in a dog fight maybe you're getting a slow uh, debuff put on you and trying to get the position to use your cannons and dish out I, I, I'd say you're almost always going to dish out more damage in a dog fight with beam arrays than you ever will with cannons if somebody wants to do a single cannon build and prove me wrong, please post a video. But in real world, real world experience, what I've noticed and, and come to appreciate about beams is that they're just going to always dish out more damage in real world, moving around kind of circumstances. So at the end of the day, it's going to be, it's going to fall down to personal preference as to what you like to run on your ship. But I hope today, uh, giving you some of the input, I feel like I've spent months digging up some of this informa information on uh, YouTube and back alleys on Google. So I hope some of you have the opportunity to listen to this while you're playing and not waste as much time as I had to finding out some of this stuff. I hope some of you find this video useful. Uh, I'd like to take the time now to wish everybody a happy and safe holiday season. Um, please like and uh, comment or subscribe if you uh, appreciate the video or you'd like to see me make videos on uh, other topics feel free to uh, send me a message or leave a comment uh, take care of yourself guys and I will see you in the next one